But of course, there's a problem um, because, uh, well, botulinum toxin injections are treatment of choice uh, at this moment. There's the most evidence uh, for the effectiveness of that treatment. But uh, in a review by um, Kailas Batia from um, Queen's Square in London, uh, he reported in a re review that only 51% of the patients were satisfied with the botulinum toxin treatment. And the effects of the botulinum toxin treatment um, dep depends on many factors. For example, the experience of the neurologist, uh, the dose of the injection, the place of injection, the ident identification of the right muscles to inject. So there's a, uh, a lot to do there to improve the treatment. And in the case of physiotherapy, there's a big problem as well because, like I said before, cervical dystonia is a rare disease. So most physiotherapists never see a dystonia patients during their career. So if they see a patient, they don't know how to treat it. And besides that, there is an enormous lack of evidence toward the effectiveness of physiotherapy in cervical dystonia. So they don't have the, the literature to fall back on. So those are uh, two big problems in the treatment of cervical dystonia. So to tackle these problems, uh, we found the dystonia net in 2010. And this is a collaboration between uh, four major academic hospitals in the Netherlands, uh, which supports the doctors uh, during their consultations. And, well, this, this shows some general information uh, on dystonia. So it will be available for doctors all over the world. Now, and besides that, um, we developed a standardized physiotherapy program. And it's not a new program. We combined existing strategies into a, a new program based on uh, an extensive literature search and uh, expert meetings as well. And it contains elements of the method of Jean-Pierre Bleton. Maybe most patients know, at least the cervical dystonia patients know who Jean-Pierre Bleton is. He's a real experienced uh, physiotherapist from France, uh, from Paris. Um, and I visited him, visited him in Paris and he showed me his, his, his treatments and told me what we can use of his treatment to put in the, the standardized physiotherapy program. Um, we also extended it with the theories on motor learning. Uh, and these are theor theories on how to give feedback uh, and how to obtain uh, the optimum results for the translation of a motor task to another task in the daily uh, life setting outside the clinic because you can give all kinds of exercises within the clinic, but patients um, must know how to perform those tasks and translate them to daily life situations. And there's a big difference in this. And these theories of motor learning can help you with the translation to daily life situations. And uh, Mark Edwards already told something of neuroplasticity, and that there are changes in neuroplasticity in cervical dystonia. And we also use uh, principles of enhancing neuroplasticity, the good neuroplasticity in cervical dystonia patients. Um, uh, we put that in the program as well. And these are uh, uh, principles on the nature and the frequency and the intensity of uh, the training we use. And um, why the decrease in frequency? Because the emphasis is on independent training and the therapist acts as a coach. So there's not a lot of hands-on treatment, it's more exercise. And because cervical dystonia is a chronic condition, uh, we want to enable people, we want to give them the skills, the confidence and the tools how to uh, control their symptoms themselves. So we want to make the therapist obsolete in a way. Um, but because it is, uh, there is a lack of evidence towards the effectiveness of physiotherapy, uh, uh, we decided to put up a study as well to create that evidence, and the protocol is um, um, published in 2013, so it contains more information on the, on the physiotherapy program, so if you're interested in it, this is freely available on the internet.